All right, so another week inside Star Citizen is back for the year, and we've got branding to talk about, folks. Branding might not seem like that big a deal, but let me tell you, um, this game has taken some significant steps up when they do hit the branding, and a lot of what makes the game so fun are, the, I think, the existing branding and how that helps, like the ship companies, the, the companies that own the planets, all that kind of stuff is like what we make jokes about, what brings the extra joy to the game. It's not crucial, doesn't build the game, but it's pretty important, especially with this game and how many factions, planets, and locations they're trying to build all in different locations and in areas. This is, I think this is going to be more interesting than it sounds at face value, but please join me and uh, we'll see just where it comes in. Thanks for hopping in and uh, I don't know, let's go. <laughs> One of the major mandates of our evergreen programming is to highlight and explore the works of as many teams contributing to the creation of our universe as possible. And on this continuing road to Alpha 323, 4.0, and beyond, we periodically detour onto the proverbial side streets, if you would, and dedicate some time to those aspects you might not discover following the development of any other game. So on this week's show, I'm proud to highlight a team dedicated to bringing a creative flourish visual consistency, and contextual meaning to the various companies, factions, and societies of the Persistent Universe, the branding team from CIG Montreal. Hell yeah. Yeah, see, it is the Montreal team, but this is also part of, I haven't released that video yet. I have a video about Turbulent coming out. Supporters can watch it already. It talks about this team. They do good work. I expect to see something significant regarding factions Let's in go. this video. All right, um, where to start? <laughs> I joined Typing, the team in January, about two years ago it was. I was coming in from an experience at another company where I had set up the first branding team for a video game, which was a really inter interesting experience. So when I heard about the, uh, the opportunity to do it for Star Citizen and build a branding team for a project like that was something that is, you know, you don't want to pass up on. When I stepped into the first first few months doing, you know, a bit of a due diligence, looking at the state of um, what we have in the game already in terms of branding, logos, the different manufacturers, the and confusing all the brands, factions, 10 years worth of material being put into the game, often being done by, you know, different artists or different parties and for different reasons also, you know, there was just a, a, a wide... Something that's also not... Uh, considered as much as a lot of the artwork and even the ship models are contracted so you, you might have a favorite ship um and you can use sometimes you can tell when a ship was made by this or designed by the same person but the difficulty of bringing in all these artists and making si ships of that quality making them consistent with the branding and all that kind of stuff must be really hard and you can see how that's kind of not been as consistent with other parts of the game so hopefully with a team like this, we do start to see really con consistent and major updates to how branding's going. Variety of styles, there would be a lot of like different interpretations for a single brand. And that was something that I noticed right away and I wanted to tackle as soon as I joined the team is to try and bring some a unifying vision, a bit more consistency to, you know, just help support the Star Citizen narrative. Also Good hands. Augment greatly uh, in terms of immersion. And that was something that I noticed right away and I wanted to tackle as soon as I joined the team. Man, I'd love with, to not have the text for this kind of B-roll. It's good stuff. But they're having fun with it. Good for them. In-game branding is not only about defining, like, creating logos and nice posters and cute little signs. We get involved with character design, the ships, you know, creating the manufacturers for the ships. We touch marketing, we touch web. It's just such a wide range of different applications and topics that we that we go through. I think it's uh, it's as important as any other parts of the uh, of the game. It creates a brand cohesion and a really good uh, immersion for the player. If it comes to, yeah, obviously like brands and logos, you know, if it's a ship, you know, make it look real professional, like it's a, you know, like in real life, like a fancy car company or something like that, you know. 
Well, branding is a uh, sorry. That was very quiet. The, uh, the environment development, you know, developing the locations. I think it, it helps a lot with the immersion. One of the things that we've tackled uh, recently is some navigational signage for the, for the landing zone. So, you know, putting up maps, putting up signage, different assets that we add to the game to help the player understand his. I wonder how that's going to continue to fit into the game now that they're adding mini maps. How much that sign, those signs will be needed. It's a nice little immersion factor. And I guess if you don't have mini maps when your helmet is off. That's also good. Um, and assuming that they are cities and they have atmosphere, I'm guessing we won't have our helmets on. So that might, that might work, actually, still. We'll see. Environment, understand the gameplay, understand the locations, the story, the narrative. It adds a visual component to the narrative uh, to create a more impactful story. So you have uh, the brand, like the, the narrative that people know, but then with the visuals, we can add an extra layer to it. In Star Citizen, especially for the manufacturers, you know, everything revolves around ships and the manufacturers are very important in their core to uh, the gameplay and the identity of the game. And I noticed that, you know, a lot of these very important brands didn't have that unifying vision that we were looking for. Nice turning. So Mirai was a new brand that we created, which yeah, was- Yeah, I felt like their um, first experiment with it. Division of, of MISC. So when you look at Mirai, we start off with uh, brand and positioning, um, the brand bio, so a history of the brand, basically. A little bit what they're about, uh, a tagline. So this is where, you know, we're collaborating with the narrative team to to come up with these uh, the information. For this, this is a and title. That is the first, the, the, the starting point. That's all part of the, uh, the brand style guide. A style guide is for everyone to really get to understand the company and we, Try to keep it simple, but you put all the elements you need, like the logos, the colors, you're allowed to use the typography that goes with that company. See now, I love this kind of stuff. I was, I'm hoping to see this. Argo, Argo has a really cool uh, lore. Go to, the, <laughs> go to the Astro Historian for all that, but it's awesome the way that they came to be coming from a train company, the whole name and stuff. But I, would, I hope they give us these for all the different brands. Or at least make sure all this info is in the Galactopedia, which I'm sure it is. Company, even shapes. Every company has colors. If the primary color is blue, let's say you can't, you can't go out and do like branding for that company or make it like red, you know? So we're all trying to like tie everything together to make sure everybody's on the same page. What's interesting about Drake is it was one of the first brands that I had to interact with when I joined the company. First thing I did was research a little bit about the brand and noticed that there was a lot of multiple versions. Wait, and that was did a cool was picture. Research a little bit about uh, I guess this is on one of the websites. I don't think I've seen this picture. Hmm. It's a big ship, man. The Kraken. When is that going to happen? About the brand and noticed that there was a lot of multiple versions and interpretations of the brand. That was the first one that we had to make a hard call on, you know, what this brand is and how, how do we define it. So Drake, we wanted to bring it in a little bit closer to the essence of the brand. It's more, uh, not the black sheep, but the outcast, if you will, and the manufacturers. So it's always tried to get in with the big boys at Fleet Week, but it's never managed, hence why they have their defense con um, a little bit on the side. Um, so we wanted to tie into that and wanted to have that, not that evil vibe to it, but that, you know, the outcast vibe, a little bit rebellious. Um, so the black and red was an obvious choice. And it's something that we had already in the game for defense. Who said Red Fabrellius? Better than anything else that we had um, previously yeah. produced. Same thing. We're looking at uh, Crusader. We noticed that ships are using uh, red and gray branding on the ships for Crusader. Um, if you visit Horizon, there's a, a, a showroom that they have there that's completely all black and white. If you walk around the halls on Horizon, you notice there's uh, some branding for Crusader that is blue and white. So we had, again, multiple interpretations of the same brand, and we wanted to unify that. Like, okay, stuff's all over the place. What do we do with this? And the, things, got, things got a little messy over these 10 years. Bring it in a little bit more. So we started looking at the brand itself, what was interesting, what felt right with its, the essence that was, um, you know, put forward by narrative and the, and, and the lore, and also, you know, through the community. And we uh, came up with the, the version of Crusader that we have now. So obviously touching these brands, you know, 10 years in uh, on a project, there's 
a lot of history on the game. You know, it meets some resistance and, you know, you got to be careful and how far you go into updating the brands, even if it's for the better. It's always good to respect, you know, the work that's been done prior. But uh, all in all... Uh, He's like, even if I'm right... Uh, so far, and you I know? think we're making some good progress on a lot of these. I'm sure he knows what he's doing. In addition to making all the branding for you, for the players, we uh, also make stuff for us. Working on tools as well, this one of the things that I noticed when I joined is we didn't have a proper uh, channel to communicate to everyone freely and openly and in a, in a way that would, you know, encourage the devs and everybody on the t different various teams to actually use these tools, these style guides and these resources that we are, we're creating for them. So we uh, came up with the idea of creating a brand catalog. It's like, a, it's the company really started to serious up over the last few years. We've talked about this when it came to oh man, what was the team? Um, well, the missions team definitely had kind of a moment where it seemed to come together over the last couple of years. I mean, the Planet Tech team did it a while ago. Um, and some other teams have like, you can kind of tell that they're starting to put out more content from their own corner. Branding team has had their thing. And it feels like every time one of these things that's like the branding team that touches other teams happens, the whole company gets a boost in terms of it's like, okay, we're taking this more seriously now. Obviously they've been really focused on Squadron 42, which has a lot of brands. And they probably have done a lot of brand work for that game. But Star Citizen has been like a literal just game engine playground, it feels like, it, it seems, for them for a while. And only now in the last year or so, in the last two years maybe, and definitely going forward in this year, does it feel like it's starting to shape up into an actual game feeling. Even these content updates feel like they are more focused on a game that's like an early access that we'd see from a AAA game coming out in a few months or, or six months or 12 months as opposed to like hey we're building the game <laughs> which i appreciate i love that i love that uh that period maybe wish we got a couple more features but it's been good so the brand catalog is for in-house so it's uh it's the documents that will be used for all the teams where the whole of the information for all the manufacturer brands mostly will be found and you will have downloadable links for all the assets. So everything will become super cohesive uh, nice. for in-house. And also when everything comes out in game and in marketing, uh, everything will have the same, all the manufacturer brands will have the same look and feel. So we uh, starting it off. Oh my God, I are the colors of different armors going to match? Are we gonna have the same color red on different armors now? Please? Manufacturers, obviously, they are front and center, but um, it will grow, grow into you know all the rest of the brands that we we see in the in the in, in the universe. Pyro was, I think, is one of my favorite mandates we've done so far for the branding team. Um, not only because uh, we're touching a specific aspect um, of branding that is not like, not often talked about. Also because um, we have the right team members to tackle this sort of mandate. And it was a lot of fun for it because the team was really excited about that. Graffiti is uh, another part of, uh, of my background, which uh, me and Max uh, worked uh, a lot on this aspect in, back in the days in our life. So we had a lot of fun building uh, the graffiti structure. Each graffiti style were really existing graffiti style from all around the world. And uh, we had to reproduce as much accurately possible the- That's uh, fun. Tags, uh, throw ups, uh, murals, or any aspect of the realness of graffiti, which that was a lot of fun. Basically, like we drew all the graffiti and we, we made their space look really uh, grimy and uh, the signage, you know, the relic signage. Yeah, but where is our graffiti tool? I want I want graffiti tier one and tier two on the roadmap, please. Uh, but lots of graffiti too. Lots of like faded, dirty layers and layers of stuff on the walls. So it was really amazing to see how uh, they, they took some visuals that existed that the environment team had created and they came in and went over this with the different graffiti. So they really developed like all the layers that you need for it to feel real. 
that was something that uh, you know is very rich and is extremely fun to bring forward with the visuals and the branding and at that point it's it's more than branding it becomes like storytelling basically right you're telling a story through all the elements that you're putting on the walls and in the environment that help sell the lore and again augment immersion in the experience for the player burn and pyro who wants some noodles that we found in like in checkmate station by the, the, the rough and ready was a lot of fun creating that the identity of a faction i'm not gonna lie man if i was in a hardcore spacefaring gang that could just control shipping lanes and run space stations and towns on different planets i would not want that game to be called rough and ready please please even give me the dusters nine tails i don't even know what is that pokemon i don't care it's not rough and ready gang right um Thanks. in space in 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 a derelict abandoned station in the middle of nowhere I think you really get a vibe when you when you get there, when you enter the, the zone. You like know what? You right Good away, for them if they're proud of it, though. Rough and ready. They, they made the logo like mm -hmm. a big sculpture. Yeah, so I thought make that logo. Pretty cool from like where it started to where it's at now. I think the graffiti and the sculpture does it mostly. That is pretty cool. had the opportunity to work with the character team to define a little bit of the uh, tattoos that go in line with the direction that we had, you know, for the type of faction we wanted this, this gang to look like. I started the brainstorm around tattoos, which were all uh, bring a bit of like uh, violence and of contrast on parts of the skins of the character design. So we had specific references we had as targets and a special feel that we wanted to have with this gang because there's not only one gang, there's multiple and they all need to have, you know, each their own unique identity. There's a part of me who always wanted to be a tattoo artist, but I think this kind of work is, uh, is a work of art uh, by itself. So uh, the character artists really managed to bring a lot of the visual identity we started from. All the polishing was uh, really the character artist who Managed a great job. I wish my tattoos looked that sharp all the time. Well, to me, I think the, the branding side is uh, often looked over. And I think we, like, we're building a team here to put an emphasis on the branding side. Every little thing, the so little graffiti and you know the logos and the signage, the navigational signage, everything. I think we're trying to push it a little further. It's all about making one step closer to the real world, which we're surrounded every day by branding and either textures, typography, everything. I think uh, this is we're Squadron 42 music. on top of the Sunday. I think it makes, I think that branding makes the whole game feel more real. And I think this is where we can also develop like this em emotional connection to everything that you see in game and uh, everything that the player uses, buys and interacts with. The opportunity to do graphic design and advertisement, fake advertisement within a game so rich and deep as Star Citizen is, I mean, I don't know a graphic designer that wouldn't want to like to contribute or participate or be part of a team like this. I mean, there's so much, so much variety. Okay, now when do we get this? Because I was just covering uh, in a video coming out some time soon, <laughs> I was covering the new visor and lens update. And I realize we do not have almost any detail about it. Even in their own update, it doesn't say much about what it includes. Now, I know we're not getting these physical lenses just yet, but I'm wondering when we get them because they've never talked about this. Like, are we sticking to the idea that if you don't have a helmet or something in your eyes, you can't see who's calling you? You can't see uh, your minimap or your scanning and ping? How are they going to make sure that new players are really aware of that and don't get caught off guard? Because it's a cool idea, and they still call the system visor and lens, but they still haven't talked about the lenses. And they're starting now to talk about helmets having crosshairs when they, you know, non-helmets or not in combat helmets not having them. So they're starting to differentiate that. This has nothing to do with branding. But I'm really interested in knowing where they are with this whole lens thing. There's so much to do. The lore and the narrative is so rich. It's just a never-ending stream of opportunity to create really cool stuff. I get that. Yeah, branding in this game would be awesome. That'd be fun to do. So what did we learn this week? 
Well, hopefully we learn that branding is for more than just marketing uses. It's a tool and an artistry that can apply to many aspects of universe creation, including signage, personal identity, and maintaining a universe of internal consistency that doesn't break immersion. Now, don't forget that our Lunar New Year, Coramore, and the associated FreeFly events all start today. So you can mosey on over to the robertspaceindustries.com website for details. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. Thanks for letting us share the process of game development with you, and we'll see you all here next week. All right, so Thank that you. was, uh, I mean, you know, it was a touch on branding. It was definitely very branding focused. There was no gameplay implications. Got a small update on factions, which is fun. I am really looking forward to, I get Thanks. really Thank the factions, the factions and the companies. I, I was hoping we'd get more, but this was really a touch on, this is what branding is about, this is what we do. And I think I, I still appreciate that. This is probably Thank the least exciting inside Star Citizen we'll get this quarter. Um, but they do these, they do these pretty commonly. And there was a time when they were doing these about specific people rather than teams. Seems they've refined it a little bit. Um, and now that the teams are building, they can do more full featured about each individual team like this. But I hope that we hear more about the factions, their reputations, and how those things differ. Love the amount of very variety we're getting from the different locations in the game right now, though. So looking forward to that continuing. And thanks for coming. See you all next week. I've been your host, uh, not Jared Huckabee. And um, bye. Bye.